Good morning everybody. Today we're going cycling. Happy Christmas! <laughs> now in order to go cycling you will need one times bicycle. Fortunately I have one here ready to go. Now I've never chatted about my bike so I think I'll take the time to just show you around it a little bit because I love this stuff. Right, first off, as I mentioned in a video the other day, I finally got the Garmin up and running. Took a little while. Uh, it's not the most intuitive system in the world, I've got to say, but once you get the hang of it, it is very useful. So look at this menu. You wouldn't believe this is a product that came out last year. It looks like a Tamagotchi menu or something with all these little heart monitor exercise. Yeah, once you get the hang of the buttons, it's quite a nifty little device. The only trouble is it's been showing me the wrong time. And well, I think the temperature is based on what it is inside. Last night it was showing me the time for Thailand. It still thought we were in Thailand, pretty, probably because that's the last time we used it. But even though it's got GPS, it uh, doesn't have the correct time. And a minute ago it was just telling me it lost GPS connection. So probably when I take it outside, it'll be better. I haven't got a ride up now, but you can see like altitude. You can see, you know, the hill that's about to come. You can see how much you're going to have to climb. You can see the temperature. You can see all sorts. And if you've got extra devices like heart rate monitor and... Uh, What's the word? Speed sensors and stuff in the pedals. You can do a whole lot more with it as well. Got lights, one there, one there. Rechargeable, nice and easy, nice and cheap. This is actually from Aldi. Look how bright that is. Oh, there we are. And a GoPro. Yeah, I love this little thing. You can change, you can change the viewing angle, the frame rate, the definition. So it can go up to 4K, I think. But then I think you only get 30 frames a second which isn't ideal for like action shots. I like um, 1080p 120, but that does take up a lot of space. This was ideal in Thailand and all that because it can survive pretty decent heat and it's also waterproof. So it's great for cycling in the rain, going in the pool, going in the sea, all sorts. I love it. Got my little bell that came with the bike. Oh. Inside my bag I have spare inner tube for punctures little puncture repair kit. Little tool thingy my doodle. This was like two pounds off Amazon. You can see how rusted it is. <laughs> um, tire levers, that sort of thing. These are pretty handy. Having a bit of trouble focusing and this which I use for the mud guards. Uh, yeah that's it. That's the one that you can tighten up because these are a bit temperamental. They go all over the place and if they're slightly out of alignment then the wheel just rubs against them and it makes a horrible noise. Down here we've got an old inner tube because I think because of how thin this part of the, the top tube is it doesn't really fit around. You can see all the like the slack here. I normally tie that up before I go out on a ride but if I put an old inner tube there it gives it the right amount of sort of size to get the bag strapped on properly. Two mud guards necessary in the winter here or I'll get covered in mud. Two bike bottles. These Camelback ones are excellent. I bought one when I first started cycling that you need to like unscrew the top while you're cycling and it's just really annoying. These are so much better. You squeeze it out. Little mini pump. That's even got a pressure gauge. This was really handy when we were traveling because we didn't take a big bike pump along with us. So this was great for topping up and reinflating tires on the go. I had to do that once or twice. Excuse the uh, horrible mud on all these pedals and stuff. And there is one last thing I want to show you here. I'll just flip the bike around. I sincerely apologize for the state of this bike. I really need to get it cleaned. You can see that chain. That is awful. I apologize, but this is what I wanted to show you. This cassette here. This is a 40 cassette. This is more like what you'd find on a mountain bike. But when we're in Thailand, a lot of people were getting them attached to their bikes because the hills there are just crazy inclines. And certainly for someone like me, who's not the fittest or best cyclist in the world, if you wanted to go up any of the mountains, especially one that a lot of people do, the biggest mountain in Thailand, Doi Intanon, you would need probably something like this. It just has a bigger ring at the back to give you more room to spin on large hills. But this was so ideal in Thailand and I've kept it on here because I'm not the sort of cyclist who goes super fast. So I much prefer to have a lower gear and maybe not a super high top speed but this, I think, for going out in the hills around Brighton, this will be perfect. So there you are. That's the most interesting features of my bike. Now I'll show you my clothes. Why not? Yeah, I've laid them out all nice and trendily and minimally. All right, begin with the shorts. I always used to wonder why people 
you know, you see a lot of people riding bikes and you think, oh, why are they wearing Lycra? Like, if you're going to ride a bike, why does it have to be all this, like, elastic stuff? And why do you have to have the big crotch stuff here? It looks silly. And then you start riding bikes and you realize, you know, you, if you try to ride a bike for a serious period of time without this little pad, you are going to have a bad time. This, for example, I got an Aldi. It was 10 pounds, yeah, 9.99 even. And part of my decision, actually, I was influenced by this because of the name, Power Armor, for anyone who plays Fallout. On the back, for example, it's got three pockets, one huge pocket. This fits a surprising amount in. Like I've managed to fit, I fit my phone and then like a banana in the back, just that one pocket. And then you've got a little zipper thing for, I don't know, wallet, I put money in there usually. Um, and it's just really breathable. When you've been cycling for 50 kilometers, you don't want to be wearing a t-shirt, you don't want to be wearing cotton, you want something like this. These I bought in Thailand, they were 800 baht, which is like 20 quid-ish, 20 pounds. These are more expensive than that, but these have actually been great. Because um, the ones I wore before had the bib, the, the bit you put over your shoulder, and that was really annoying to get on and off, especially if you needed a toilet in the middle of a ride. So these are great, this is great, and they're cheap. And also, handily, the red matches the red, which wasn't intentional. And the same on these gloves, in fact. These were ones my brother got me for Christmas it, like a couple of years ago. They're actually a very astute purchase. Congratulations on that one. You see that on the thumb and forefinger? So you can use touch screens on it. So I can use my phone while I'm cycling. Not while I'm cycling, but if you needed to stop and look for directions without taking your gloves off, they got the padding. Yeah, these are great in the winter. This bad boy. He goes under this guy. I probably got that from Aldi years ago, to be honest. They have good cycling kit, I'll give them that. And this guy, <laughs> this is something I bought before Thailand. People were warning us to take something like this to protect against the UV on long bike rides. You need something to protect the back of your neck. Unfortunately, I could only find it in black. And when I went to Thailand, I actually didn't wear this because obviously in 30, 35 degree heat, wearing a, you see what it is? put your face comes out here. It looks like an old diving helmet or something. That would be way too hot. So I just got a cheap, actually maybe I can find it. There it is. I just got this kind of a mini scarf bandana thing, but this was much better for keeping the sun off my neck in Thailand. But now I'm in freezing cold England. I'm gonna wear this guy for the first time and I should look pretty hilarious in it. So that's enough of that. Let's get cycling. Here we go. Hello. Hello. Ah, it sounds really weird because my ears are covered. Google Maps seems to have taken me around a back route. I think it's technically a public bridleway, or whatever you call it, so bikes can go on it, but just have a look. I think that's more of a mountain bike track, really. I don't really want to risk sliding off because I don't have the right tires on for that. I seem to have ended up around the back of a school between the school and the dual carriageway slash motorway on the other side. Must be really annoying living here because all you can hear is just the, the drone of cars passing. <sighs> Don't know how you get to sleep at night. Anyway, I'm headed off to a place called the Devil's Dyke, which sounds quite intimidating. It's supposed to be a reasonably big hill climb just the other side of this motorway here. So I'm looking forward to that because there are no hills in Brighton at all until you leave, until you get out of town. So it'll be nice, I haven't been up one in months. And I finally warmed up, although my hands are still freezing. <laughs> Sweet tarmac -y road.
All right, hello again. I've tried to come to the most secluded part of the wood where there's no wind. Um, so hopefully you can't hear any wind, because I can't hear any, but who knows. Anyway, oh, it's really nice up here, but it is very, very cold. I think I'd meant to stop and chat for a while, just sit and have a chat about bikes and stuff, but I don't know, I think the longer I stay still, the worse it's gonna be for me. Probably better to keep my muscles warmed up. But having said that, I have a treat. Oh, the garden has started. There's also a man over there. He's just come to the top of the hill. He's parked his van and he's just playing flute out the back of his van. I'll try and get a shot of him, but he might have gone by now. He's not playing good flute. He's playing really bad flute. So I don't really know what that's about. Only in England, I suppose. But it's really cool to come up this high. Um, it was too windy, so I'll, I recorded a bit of the map that was there, and it had Leith Hill and Box Hill. Box Hill is right by where my parents live, and I guess on a good day you could probably see it from here. I don't know how far it is, 20, 25 miles? Well, that's the hill I've cycled up a few times back at home. Not at home, my parents' house. My home is Brighton now. My advice, if you're going on a long cycle or doing exercise of any kind, is to make sure you eat enough, make sure you drink enough. So I shall eat now, I shall carb up, and I think that will take me all the way home. According to Google, it is two degrees right now. So you can see my breath. The bottled water gave me brain freeze. I was drinking it on the way up the hill. The bot <laughs> it was so cold, it tasted like refrigerated water and I was like chugging it down and it gave me brain freeze. So I might have gone the wrong route because this wasn't as steep as I thought it would be. It was still a good climb, but I'd like to find a better route. But anyway, time to get back home now. Wow, so I'm showered now. That was a really good shower. <laughs> I was reluctant to, to get in before, because have you ever had it where you've had a snowball fight and you haven't had gloves, so you've been picking up so much snow and your hands are so cold, so you think, naturally, I'm gonna go inside and run it under hot water. I've done that a few times in the past. I did it at school and it would just make your hands, it would make, your, it would make you feel like your fingertips were about to fall off they're in that much pain. And I'm sure the best way to do it is to put it in cold water to sort of bring them up to a better temperature. But I feel much better now and I'm glad I decided to do it. Just get out on the bike. Don't worry about the weather. Don't worry about the temperature. If it's cold outside, then you just warm up as soon as you get out on the bike. It doesn't have to be cycling, it can be anything. If you're going out for a walk, going out for a run, you will warm up very quickly, I assure you. But at the same time, I feel better for having gone outside, got on the bike, done some exercise, and just, uh, I don't know, done something I was kind of reluctant to do because the payoff is better than if you just stayed at home. Here is the lunch you made while I was out. It's a spicy soup, which I could really do with right now. I hope this video has maybe inspired you. Uh, just to, I think it's so important in winter to just, to get outside. It's very easy to fall into the trap in winter of staying inside because it's warm, it's easy, you're comfortable. Uh, and me and Maddie have fallen into that trap a lot since we've been here. And you do begin to notice it. You feel grouchy, you feel like you're trapped inside a bit, you feel a bit claustrophobic, if you know what I mean. So we've been making a real effort lately to just get outside. It doesn't have to be a 20, 30 kilometer bike ride. It can be just walking around the block. It can be anything like that. Just to get the fresh air in your lungs, you know? And on that note, I think I'll leave it here. So stay tuned for mince pie recipe coming up. I'm excited because that means when Maddie does recipe videos, I get to eat all the food she makes. So I'm looking forward to that and I hope you are too. I'll see you then.